Hello, and welcome to the very first edition of the Men Need to Be Heard show. My name is Dan, and I wanted to introduce myself today, talk a little bit about what my plan is for the show, and how we're going to move forward with it. So, I guess I'll start out by saying, who am I? Who is this guy that's talking to you? And what is he all about? So the show is about men's issues. Specifically, I'm going to be addressing a wide range of things. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. But in general, I'm going to be speaking about the issues that men and boys face in today's society. Uh, I've been an advocate for men and boys for going on three and a half decades now. Um, and I really like to focus on things like pointing out the double standards that we face and the hypocrisy of what goes on and the treatment towards men. So uh, again, to talk a little bit about myself, in my past, I was a victim of domestic violence and for a few years ran a peer group for men who were also victims of domestic violence. Um, during that time, I worked as an advocate trying to get a domestic violence shelter open for men in upstate New York, lobbied extensively towards that, ultimately was not successful. We could not get the funding for it. And that's going to be a show that I'm going to be doing down the road, talking about that in detail and bringing some guests on to discuss that whole scenario. Um, I was also involved in father's rights for Oh, about 15 years and again lobbied extensively trying to help men get treated better in family court, um, worked on, helped write, and ultimately got moving forward on a bill for shared parenting in New York. This was in the mid-early 2000s. Um, ultimately, we did not get the bill passed. Uh, I'm going to be doing a show on that. So, Stay tuned on that stuff, but also uh, just a little bit about me personally. Um, I'm a small business owner. I've also worked in radio. Um, in fact, I'm on a radio show weekly right now that has nothing to do with men's issues. Uh, I've hosted in the past a local TV show speaking about men's issues, guested dozens of times. Um, and really where my forte was is in writing. So I've written dozens of articles which have been published around the world uh, about the issues men face, most of which primarily had to do with domestic violence back in the day. And I'm not saying this to toot my own horn. It's just simply to let you know who I am. All right. Um, I'm a, almost 60 years old, so I'm sure my detractors will be pointing that out in the commentary as they always do. Yes, I don't have any hair. I do shave my head. So those of you who like to point that out, have at it. It doesn't bother me. It actually makes me laugh when you do that. Um, but recently, I started using social media to speak about men's issues. Um, primarily, I started out on TikTok uh, during the pandemic. So it was 2020-ish. I started an account talking about that. Um, that account ultimately got banned um, because, well, they didn't like what I was saying. And so I, I actually stepped away from it for a little bit because I was pissed. Um, I had I ballpark 30,000 followers at that point, and they literally just took the account away. Uh, a few months later, I started another one. That one got banned when I hit about 10,000. Like the day I hit 10,000 followers, poof, it disappeared. Um, and then again, I had another account that got banned. So now I'm on my on TikTok, my third account. Um, I also started an account on Instagram and here on YouTube. This is where you're watching this video. And I and I've ultimately found that Instagram and YouTube is a little more willing to let men speak out about their issues. TikTok, like I said, on there on Men Need to Be Heard 3, if you want to follow me there, the odds are that account's going to get banned. I've got 20 some odd thousand followers now. Um, and what ultimately happens is when you start getting some traction, some following, either TikTok will take your account away or the feminists find it and mass report you and try and get it taken away, which is one of the reasons that I wanted to start this podcast, because at least on YouTube, they're a little more willing to let us speak. That doesn't mean that things don't happen. They do. But in general, I have found that YouTube at least is open to it. 
Uh, but also I had many followers on the various social media accounts that I have who um, suggested that I do a podcast. Uh, some of them have known me from the past, knew I've done radio, know I had that show and said I should bring it back. Um, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to do that. The other thing too, though, is when you're dealing with things like TikTok, uh, YouTube Shorts, which I do a lot of, Instagram, you only have so much time. You have either 15 seconds, a minute, three minutes, up to 10 minutes. And you really can't cover issues the way they deserve to be covered in any kind of detail when you only have that much time. And of course, bringing on guests is virtually impossible. Um, I have done some lives with various people. Um, but in general, I wanted to be able to really dive into some of these issues and um, be able to bring on guests experts, if you will, in various fields of study. Um, in fact, I've already started lining up some guests. I'm going to be bringing on a divorce lawyer at some point. I've got some men's rights advocates who are both male and female to talk about their experiences, why they do what they do, what they're fighting for. Um, I've got psychologists to talk about issues that men face um, dealing with depression suicide and that kind of stuff. So I'm starting to line up guests and we'll be rolling that out over time. Really my ultimate goal with all this is to help men live happier lives, to be able to deal with a world that's stacked against them. We all know the issues men face. Um, they tend to get downplayed. I'm trying to be kind there. Um, and when men speak out, they tend to get shushed. So who knows, this account may disappear at some point, but I'm willing to fight. I'm willing to stand up and speak out. And I want you guys to do the same. All right. I, this is a, a place for men to speak out, to share what they're going through. Um, I, I want this to be a place where you don't have to worry about what sharing what you're dealing with for fear it's going to be held against you, because I can assure you it won't. I won't tolerate it. Um, if you have issues that you are dealing with that you want me to address on here, now I can't give you like psychological help or any of that. I am not a psychologist. I am not a lawyer. Um, I will be sharing some of my experiences. As I said, I did run a peer group for domestic violence. I do have some training in that, but I don't want to hold myself out as an expert in any of that. Um, and I will give the caveat when I give advice on certain things, it's my own opinion. I'm not giving legal advice. I'm not giving any kind of doctoring advice, if you will. Um, but I do want to share my experiences and try and help you out. Um, and as I said, I've got a lot of guests that I'm lining up to come on and share what they've dealt with, what they deal with, what they see, um, and really kind of find and help you find resources for the various issues that you, you're dealing with. Um, some of the topics that I'm going to be covering, uh, just men's issues in general, obviously, but really I want to delve a lot into how society views men. You know, we all talk about how the, the Hollywood and you see it on advertising, TV and all of that, how men are portrayed as bumbling idiots. And when you think about boys growing up, as I said, I'm almost 60 years old. As far back as I can remember, I remember men being, or and boys, being portrayed as bumbling idiots. Go watch the Brady Bunch sometime. You'll see how the girls on that show were always the, quotes victors, and the boys were made to look like morons. Um, that was 50-odd years ago, and that's just one example. I could give you examples going back even further than that, but I'm just trying to highlight it. So I want to, I'm going to be delving into that. I'm going to be talking about stuff like that. Domestic violence is going to be a big one. All right. That is somewhat my area of expertise. Um, what you may or may not know is there are only in the United States, two shelters that I'm aware of that cater specifically to men. Does that mean there's no help elsewhere? No, people tend to look at it as black and white. Well, you, you know, there's a place in 10 buck two that you can go to. What people don't understand is the domestic violence industry, and I call it an industry for a reason, um, doesn't care about men, doesn't cater to men. When we say sheltering, 
what we mean is if you have to move out of your house and have a place to go, there is no shelter for men. There are, well, there's two. There are often multiple shelters for women, as there should be, by the way, in in large cities and pretty much everywhere. There's always access to help for women. Men, most of the time, they'll get a voucher to go to the local flea bag pedophile motel and I'm not joking when I say that where I was a counselor um, when a man had an issue and needed a place to stay he was given a three-day voucher to a small hotel motel it was actually a motel that actually was where pedophiles were staying when they got out of jail that that's not helping men okay that shows you where they placed the value on that so I'll be talking about domestic violence, the issues men face with it, uh, talking a little bit about how to deal with it. Um, and really, one of the things that I think most men don't understand is they are victims of domestic violence and don't know they are. So we'll be delving into that down the road. Uh, I'm going to be talking about social issues, some of which I've already mentioned. A big one that I'm kind of starting to steer myself towards is, unfortunately, suicide. Men are killing themselves in record numbers, boys, teenagers, um, and it's not being addressed. You'll hear it mentioned once in a while, but it's generally mentioned as a societal problem when the reality is it's virtually all male. There are, of course, female suicides. I'm not trying to downplay that in any way, but the issue is primarily a male slash boys one. Homelessness, same scenario, right? You never hear it talked about in gender terms because they don't want you to know that it's almost all men. Obviously, there are women that unfortunately are homeless, um, and no one should be. But they don't address the fact that there are, I don't remember the exact numbers, but roughly eight, 80 to 90% of the homeless population is male. Um, again, I talked about the anti-male bias in media, in the news, um, education would be a good one, and I will be addressing that how the current education system from preschool all the way through college is extensively worked against men and boys. Um, the way it's set up, the way it's run, and how they, they refuse to even acknowledge that that situation is occurring. Although, to be fair, that's starting to change a little bit. Of course, the big ones. Family court, divorce, um, fathers trying to see their children that that's going to be a huge topic and one that i will be covering extensively and i've already got some guests lined up on that um dating marriage in general what what men are seeing uh one of the things i talk about often on my videos that i do on social media is men are walking away i want to delve into that a little bit more in detail um and, and really talk about why that's happening um which I actually right now think is a good thing in the sense that men are learning to stand up for themselves and not acquiesce to the standard that they're expected to live to. Uh, but also, to be fair, long term, it's not good for society that men are walking away. Um, and we'll, we'll talk and address how that needs to be looked at, what can be done, if anything. Um, other things that I'm, I've got on my radar, work environments, how men are treated in the corporate world, um, how there's a distinct bias that's developed against men in working. Um, we'll also be delving into things like, you know, the pay gap, the myth of the pay gap, things that you've, I'm sure, heard about many times, but I'm going to delve into it. Um, lots of stuff. And I also want to encourage you to let me know what you want me to talk about. If there's a topic maybe I haven't mentioned now that you would think would be excellent, comment, let me know. Um, I'm just on the on the verge of getting some stuff set up. Eventually, I'll have a website. Um, I'll have an email and all that. But I wanted to get started because, honestly, I've been sitting on this since roughly Thanksgiving. Um, and it's now mid-February as I'm filming this. Um, and the reason being is I had to deal with some personal stuff that I had to address. Um I had some medical issues in the fall. So as much as I wanted to do it back then, I couldn't get to it. But I also don't want to make any more excuses. I want to get into this and start helping men and boys 
and and helping them cope and deal with what's going on and again be happier so i encourage you for now at least to comment and let me know what you want to talk about um and, and really ultimately um make this not something that i run but that you run right where if you have issues that we see popping up we can come together to address them because i think well, I know the big issue that men have, and I'm not saying this is a bad thing, but men tend to try and deal with issues on their own. I do it. You do it. Men have done it for time immemorial. And I think that we need to change that a little bit. A lot of it is men don't feel safe opening up. Um, I know back in the day I didn't. I would People had no idea what I was going through when I was being abused mentally, physically, emotionally. Um, and by the way, I, I was abused as a child all the way up through my first marriage. Uh, I'm not going to delve into it too much here, but I will be addressing it down the road. So I've been there, but no one knew. I hit it. I was masterful at hiding it, as most men are. Um, but other issues I've dealt with along the way, people don't know. Um one thing that I found in working with that peer group 20 odd years ago was that, well, the, the biggest thing I found was that allowing myself to open up to speak about what I was going through and had gone through, to speak to myself even about what I was dealing with and acknowledging that, hey, there's an issue here that you need to face and stop trying to just bury as deep as you can, um, that's when my healing started. Um, and I'll be honest with you, as I said earlier, I'm approaching 60. It wasn't until I was about 40 years old that I got to a point where generally life is good. I, I'm actually very happy right now. Um, that's not to say life is perfect. Um, but when I, when I faced my demons, if you will, and I had the darkest of demons, and I'm not saying that other people don't have them. I know they have them. That's why, hence why I'm doing this. But um, really, when I found out that it was okay for, one, me to think about these issues and start dealing with them and not bury them, but also when I opened myself up, especially with other men, that's when real healing took place. And, and that's one of the things that I want this to become, a place of healing for everyone. Look, I would love to get a domestic violence shelter open. It's not going to happen. There's not going to be any funding. It's just politicians are against it. The feminist groups will fight it tooth and nail. And again, I said I'll be doing a show on that. The reality is getting a shelter open for men in every city, let alone even one city at this point. Trust me when I say this, it's going to be very difficult for anyone to do that. It's just not going to happen. Um, so I, I think this is a, my way of dealing with that is to say, you know, I would love to be working on something like that. The reality is I could spend the rest of my life doing it and I will continue to fight. Don't get me wrong, but I think I can do more good here. All right. Um, and the other thing that I really, really want to do is if I, if I achieve nothing else is to let men know it's okay to have emotions. We are not robots. Um, as I said, we tend to bury ourselves, bury our emotions, bury ourselves in our work. It's a common one you hear. And there's a lot of reasons for that, all of which, by the way, I consider valid. But change needs to happen because, as I mentioned earlier, we're seeing the results of men burying it for far too long. Um, homelessness, suicide, all of those things are not just getting worse, they're exploding and a large reason for that is men just simply cannot cope with it anymore. It has become so overwhelming. We're human beings. We're going to break down. And you know what? It's okay that we do. My goal is to address that, find help for people, come together because women are not going to support us. And I say that generally, okay? 
Um, there is a lot of women who fight on behalf of men, fight for their sons, um, who, who know that they, we need their help. And I'm going to be bringing some of them on. One of the first couple of guests, actually two of the first guests I'm going to be having are men's rights advocates who happen to be female. Um, they're going to talk about their story, why they do what they do. Um, and, and I encourage you to watch that and understand that we, the uh, reason I'm doing that is that we're not alone, that there is support out there for us. And it's not just men. But that said, we men have to support each other because the government's not going to do it. They hate us. The government wants us gone as much as they possibly can. Let's be honest. Um, you're not going to get it from any of the social programs. And I'm, I'm not, I don't mean government ones at that point. I mean private ones. There's not a lot of help out there for pr privately for men either because they don't see a need for it. There's not an awareness of it. Um, and when you start bringing it up in a, and try and bring awareness to it, they start fighting it going, oh, no, no, because I don't want to get the women's groups upset. It's the reality of what happens. Um, and then, you know, having that safe space for us to share our thoughts, share our ideas, and come together and work together. That's really what this is all about. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, as I said, in the future, I'll be bringing guests on uh, as soon as hopefully next week. My goal with the show is to try and post it weekly. I'm going to be very honest with you. That is my goal. I don't know that I could continuously do that, but I will do my best to do that. Um, as I said, I'm a small business owner. I actually am a host on a radio show, so I have to prepare for that regularly um, and a few other things that I have going on in my life. But I will do everything I can to at least try and get something up each week um, regarding this show. Um, of course, I do almost daily shorts videos. I encourage you to follow me on Instagram, here on YouTube, um, and TikTok for as long as I survive there. Um, I will post right here. <laughs> um, my, my names are how to find me on those. Um, and I encourage you to follow them because I try and make commentary at least once a day on those. Um, but again, they're short form, usually less than a minute, sometimes a little bit longer, but this is where I'm going to really delve into the issues. So thank you for watching this far. Hey, do me a favor, will you? Because we're just getting, I'm just getting started with this. Give me a like on it because that way the YouTube algorithm will start kicking it to more and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button, hit the notification so that you know when a show is going to go up. As I said, my goal is weekly. We'll see how it goes. Um, and the other, to be honest with you, it's also going to be how much response I get from you guys. If people are watching, I'll be more able to continue on and do more shows. If I find people aren't joining in or watching, you know, hey, enough said, right? And really help me to spread the word. Share this. Talk to guys that you know of that are struggling. Point them this way. As I talk about topics, hey, you know, I know you're struggling in your family court case. Go check this podcast out. He's got some stuff on that. Again, I want to be a resource to help all of you. Um, and one final note before I go, because I know what's going to happen. And I'm addressing women specifically right now. I don't hate women. I never have hated women. I've been put through hell by women. I don't hate women because my viewpoint is it's not all women. Feminists tend to say it's all men till it's no men. And sometimes I will hit them back with that. But the reality is I have no ill will towards women. I judge people based on who they are and their actions individually, not as a group. And to the ladies, I want to say this. Come watch this. More importantly, read the comments. Read what guys are saying in the comments. Because I think one of the huge issues that we see in this country, and it's a largest part of the, the division that we're seeing, is we don't listen to each other. And... I'm sorry, ladies, I'm not trying to be mean here, but the bottom line is, and the truth is, you don't listen to men. You say you want us to open up. We do. You hear, but you don't listen. It goes in one ear and goes out the other. And often you fight what we're saying. If we share a thought, 
Um, guys will tell you it gets weaponized against them. It gets brought up down the road. You think less of us for doing it. Um, that that's how guys think, and that comes from experience. All right, and I'm not trying to knock women in general. That's reality. Use this as a tool for yourself because. Again, for everyone to be healthy, whether it's men, women, girls, boys, to come together, we need to have an understanding of how we all think and feel. And this will be an opportunity for you to learn how men think and feel. And if you come into it with an open mind and you're willing to listen, um, I think it's going to surprise you and shock many of you because, let's face it, the media and the news is telling you the complete opposite in many cases of what reality is. So that all said, I really appreciate you for watching. Stay tuned. I'm really excited about this. uh, And I'll see you next time.